And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It is time. It is damn time. Yes, you don't know how much time it is. It is time right now. It's time. It's not it's yesterday. Time. Not tomorrow. It's now. The time right the fuck now. So I specifically, I didn't want to write the intro uh, that I've been doing for about nine years. So I just wrote, use any old intro. So I will be doing an intro from Rocky Four. Okay. It's time, Bunny! It's time! It's time! Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to whip and or nene our way into the final half of our big shoe. And it is said big shoe wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our main event. And so for the thousands in attendance and the millions are watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen. And gender rebels. Oh, let's get ready to count yo's. That doesn't really apply. That was last summer's. Uh, yes, movie of the week. And this week we've got yet another uh, very cheap double feature of low budget shock with a look at two movies from the '60s from Roger Corman, 1962's *The Intruder*. And the king of crap, Francis Ford Coppola's Dementia 13. I had a hard time watching this double feature. Bunny, if I had known how racist the first film was, I literally picked it because, wait a second, Willie Shat stars as a bad guy in a Roger Corman film called The Intruder? Sign me up, please. I had no idea how much the N-word would be dropped. Yeah. In this film. And it was quite shocking. Yes, but imagine how and this is this is really where it gets big points for me. Yes, you were shocked, but imagine how fucking shocked people were in nineteen sixty two. Uh okay, okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um fuck this fucking movie. It's a good movie that speaks about an important topic. It's okay, okay, hold there. It's a good movie for a Roger Corman movie. We always have to consider that. But this is a Roger Corman film. He didn't set out to say, I will use my time and effort and resources to make an important film, a film that teaches people about the importance of the civil rights movement and race relations. No, we know Roger Corman's shit by now. We're spending all summer watching his movies. He didn't make this movie as a touching lesson to teach people about race relations. He used this movie as a way to use racism to make more money. Well, this is a okay, grindhouse still, movie that accidentally who, has a message. And I Roger fucking Cor hate this movie. That's just who Roger Corman is. And yes, all of Roger Corman's great movies are accidents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just playing I... the odds that out of 900 movies, you got like what? Maybe 10 good ones? Yeah. Okay. Did he do Chopping Mall? I really like Chopping Mall. But for this movie, considering the time, Roger, here, here is what I say, okay? Roger Corman's heart is oh is almost always near the right place. Okay. So okay. so yes, most definitely, Roger Corman was sitting back thinking like racism is really bad, and I could speak out of, out about it and turn a tidy ass little profit. <laughs> I feel like, oh, wait, they're making a big motion picture uh, about the book To Kill a Mockingbird? 
well, I need to throw together a fucking racist movie. Was that the same About year? a small and town. Yes. And yes, that is very much Roger Corman. Because this movie came out like a few months before To Kill a Mockingbird hit theaters. Because To Kill a Mock... Because this movie came out around summer of 62, and the movie version of To Kill a Mockingbird came out that December. Ah. So I literally think this is just a version of Disney's making a movie about fish? Then we need to rush out a shark's tail! Yeah. And then they rush out a shark's tail... Just like uh, how DreamWorks made Ants and it came out before A Bug's Life, yeah. I feel like The Intruder came out because they were making To Kill a Mockingbird. And also, I think another reason why I had a hard time watching this picture is because in, a, in any other... If we had watched this in the 90s or the 2000s or the 2010s, yeah. then it would be like, oh, wow, look at this time capsule of a different time. Yeah. When people were more that, prejudiced. That was Where are we living this entire fucking movie? That that was problematic. But like it's that was hard. you can't really blame the movie for that. You know, like I, I do. like just like I have a very hard time watching Jojo Rabbit for very much yes. the same fucking reason. But yeah. that does not make Jojo Rabbit a bad movie. Here's the thing is that we're going to have a hard time because I do have one defense of Dementia 13. Okay. Which which I am wildly proud of. I found a way to defend Dementia 13 and now you're defending the intruder. This yeah. is this is quite interesting. Yes it is. Yes it is. I Shatner is Shatner. What I got to say though, uh Willie Shat uh, he does a great job in this movie. I saw someone say somewhere on some review that uh, he was in his early 20s when he made this film. No other person would be insane enough to do such a insanely racist movie as their first movie. Yeah. Because, damn, can you imagine if he would have been typecast? Captain's Log, star date 350.7. We are uh, visiting the home of the Klingons. I hope they're not Jews. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that would have been that would have been bad. It, it's shocking that someone this famous has such a racist bad guy part in his past, but he does a great job. Yeah, it he does almost too good of a job yes it's like wow william shadner sure does a good job of being a lying racist asshole yeah yeah and and, and and slimy womanizer borderline yeah. rapist yeah wow uh yeah william you, shadner you can, is really good at being a you loud can say the mouth. over and over again but to put yeah. a rape on film, that's over the fucking line. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that something? Isn't yeah. that something? It's like, oh, oh, William <coughs> Shatner's the bad guy in a movie called The Intruder. I, I'll watch that. I had no idea that it was about this. Okay, buddy, hit us with the plot, if you can. For The Intruders, okay. Uh, William Shatner uh, comes to a small southern town. Uh, basically the race bait. Uh, okay, let me, let, me, let me pause after... it right there. Let me pause it right there. And, and I want to say something really important. He's a carpet-bagging northerner. Yes, yes. Who goes <laughs> to a small southern town. It's the carpet-bagging northerner part that well, I just want to interject he's, there. He's from California, but it's the principle is the same. Yeah. Uh, shortly after integration was passed into law, and black kids were going to go to a white school, like, I don't know, like that Monday or some shit. Yeah. William Shatner comes into town, 
to stir up a lot of trouble about this, to feed the racism, to get them to stop these kids from going to school. Uh, and then there is like general horribleness throughout yep. th- throughout the rest of the movie. Uh, the black kids try to go to school. Uh, a couple of rednecks blew up uh, the the black church. Things of that nature until it takes kind of a... At first it has an almost borderline Mississippi burning kind of vibe to it. Not yeah. quite. But it look that kind of feels like a, a story Corman tapped into, and he sure as shit tapped into Emmett Till. Yep. So absolutely. So this one black kid who was going to school gets tricked into going into a basement with a white girl who screams and accuses of him rape. Yes. The town's folks grab him, drag him to the swing set? I was really confused by that. What, there are no trees in your town? Pretty sure I saw some trees, but I mean, it's, oh no, he's going to be gently swinged to death. So, so they're gonna. Hope they don't tie him to the slide soon. They're gonna lynch him to, a, lynch him from a swing set. Again, this is a Roger Corman movie. Yeah, he's so, making do with what he has. Let's just go with that. Uh, and they're going to. They're gonna lynch him. They're all riled up. They're having a great time. The party is on. Uh, And then this other character that I forgot to mention before, no big deal. He's deus ex machina. He comes walking up to the swing set and tells him everything that he knows and what a fraud William Shatner is and all that and how he put the girl up to do it and he brought the girl with her and the girl admitted. And William Shatner goes all weird and everybody abandons them. The end. End of film. End of film. And here's the thing. I'm watching the film and William Shatner has come is like a bigoted person from a liberal state which has come to the South specifically just to sure stir shit up yes. in regards to race relations. And that's the only reason why he's there is just to to get the townspeople to rise up against the blacks in town. And so I'm thinking, okay, who's going to be the hero? Which one of these people in this small town is going to be the hero? It's not going to be the old lady who runs whatever the inn. It's not going to be her. She said the N word. She said the N word like 30 times in the first five seconds of the movie. It's not yeah. going to be her. Who's it going to be? Uh, it's not going to be the scuzzy door to door salesman with the creepy relationship with the random chick no reporter it's going to be the reporter the reporter journalism is going to prevail and he just lost an eye okay it's not going to be him yeah. who is it going to be ah look at this a beautiful speech by his wife oh i'm going to to do what you couldn't i am going to learn to under to, to to understand this oh it's going to be her she's going to rise up and then you don't see her again no. And I'm like, who the fuck is the hero then? And then right at the end, in sweeps the creepy door to door salesman who previously had a gun. Yeah. And he's like, I'm the hero now. And it's like, fucking really? <laughs> really? Okay. I guess you got to finish the movie somehow. That's exactly how I felt about the ending of the movie yesterday. It's yeah. a great film, great film. And then the ending, you got to do what you got to do. Exactly. Is it a good exactly. Ending? I mean, no, it's a serviceable one. In particular, you, you've got to give them an ending that makes the audience feel satisfied walking out of the theater. But now, yeah. in reality, because like it's not like 
it's not like with everything he said, they were, the, the town was like, oh, William Shatner's a racist? No. <laughs> and all walked away. And why would they have fucking cared if, if the girl lied? So, you know, it's like, uh, so I'm picturing the real ending being something more like, well, boys, apparently we were kind of hasty in all this. Apparently we were wrong. Little Jenny, or whatever the fuck her name was, has clearly yeah. admitted that she has lied about the attempted rape. But since we're all here anyway... I mean, we got the rope. He we is all tied all down up here. already. <laughs> I already canceled my book club. Yeah. Let's just go ahead with the lynching. Yeah. Absolutely. Guess how much this movie cost, Bunny? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go five grand. 90,000. 90? Okay. Yeah. But let me tell you, the next film, way less. Uh. Way less. So this was made to say tickets. Kudos to Willie Shat. He does a good job playing an a-hole. This film had a hard time getting released. Big shocker there. Yeah. It was released under the names The Intruder, Shame, The Stranger, and I Hate Your Guts. Okay. And the movie bombed, and Roger Corman had the following suspicious things to say. Okay, here you go. Um, I think the movie failed for two reasons. One, the audience at the time simply didn't want to see a picture about racial integration. And two, it was more of a lecture. So from that moment on, I thought my film should be entertainment on the surface. And I should deliver any theme or idea or concept beneath the surface. And so basically, this is Roger Corman saying, oh, the movie bombed. I guess that's what I get for having a lesson in my film. Okay, yeah. new rule. My films are only about entertainment, and if I teach anyone shit, it's accidental. Let's go make some shit. And so, oh, okay, that, that sort of sours things a little bit. Yeah. And I think it's a bit suspicious to say that. But that's the intruder. The, f the fact of the matter is, Willie Shatner is eventually um, exposed as just some out-of-towner who came into town just to rile everyone up to uh, rise up against the blacks and start like a, like a race riot. Yeah. And if this were to happen today, he would immediately become super famous and become a celebrity. Oh. Oh, he'd be on God, Newsmax, yeah. he'd be on Fox, he'd have his own a podcast. He'd be selling supplements. He'd be doing Bitcoin. He'd be super famous. Oh, 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 no doubt. He, he, he and that's kind of fucking sad. He would definitely be Charlie Kirk. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Not a okay. doubt. So that's our first film, The Intruder. It's free on YouTube. You can watch it. It's a movie. So let's move on to okay. our second film. Francis Ford Coppola's Dementia 13. Now, this movie sucks ass. Yes. It's notoriously horrible. And I have seen 4K ultra high definition restorations of this film where I still can't hear what the fuck they're saying. Yeah. But seriously, the synopsis on this movie is super. Super easy. Yeah, this is a horrible film. But, as a trans woman, I am going to start off defending the movie. One aspect of this movie. One okay. small, tiny aspect of this movie. Okay? Okay. 
So this is what happened. Roger Corman was making the film The Young Writers, and he had a bunch of money left over from the film. So he went to the sound guy, a young guy named, uh, what's his name? Frankie Coppola. Okay. And he said, hey, Frankie, you always wanted to be a director. Uh, I got some money left off from the last movie I had you work, The Young Writers. If you give me a good synopsis, I'll let you write and direct my next film. Here's what I want. When you're writing the script, this is what I need. Three words. Cheap psycho ripoff. Yes. We've got a castle. Make it spooky. Murders. Cheap psycho ripoff. Go. Show me what you got. And so... He went and he wrote this, and he immediately went and like, okay, I need to come up with a story. I need to come up with a treatment. And so the first thing he did was he wrote out the scene in the lake. Yeah. So the first thing he wrote was the scene of she ties dolls together, and then she strips down, and she dives into the lake and puts the dolls down there knowing that eventually the dolls will rise up and scare the old woman and she'll know that that the haunting is real and she'll give her all of the money and whatever but while she's down there she sees like the body of the dead little girl in the grave or whatever so she swims up to the surface and the moment that she gets up she is at the feet of a bloody axe murderer who chops her alive and roger corman is basically like fully erect at this point and he said Here's 20,000. Go make this shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a cheap psycho ripoff, even down to the fact that the movie's about one woman and she dies halfway through. Yeah. It's even got that little psycho bit. And yes, this movie is bad. The movie's very bad. But you know what Dementia 13 doesn't do? What? Blame everything on a cross-dresser. Okay. Because that all right, a, all right. Psycho is a work of pure genius, except for the last fucking five minutes. Yeah. I will throw my TV through a fucking window because of that one speech that the doctor, psychiatrist, whatever detective... Yeah. does about how this man wanted to be his mother and so the torment of losing his mother caused him to go insane so he began dressing as a woman because he was an insane murderous trance okay so yes psycho gets 999 points and as far as i a trans woman am concerned dementia 13 one point okay <laughs> One point. It doesn't even have to be because you're a trans woman. It just it has to be because that's a fucking bullshit excuse. Yeah, yeah, it is a bullshit excuse. But at least Dementia 13 doesn't pin it all on trans people. So, yeah, this movie is shit. Yes. They cut it before so, The Intruder cost 90 million, 90,000, 90 million. Like, anyone would ever trust this man with that much money. Uh, our first film, The Intruder, was made for $90,000. Dementia 13 was made for 40000 Half of the money came from Roger Corman, and then half came from uh, uh, Frank Co Frankie Coppola selling the international distribution rights to the film before he even made it. Okay. So, it's pretty shitty. You know... How you can tell that a movie's really old? Ow. Oh. You can watch the entirety of Dementia 13 on Dementia 13's Wikipedia page. Oh, nice. I know two other movies that you can do that. Killers from Space with the, the aliens with the ping pong ball eyes. Yeah. And Night of the Living Dead. The original. Nice. They're coming to get you, Barbara. So, yeah, you can watch the entirety of, of uh, Dementia 13. 
on Wikipedia. And I got to say, there are some different. Okay, parts okay, of okay. But just because you can doesn't mean doesn't you mean you should. I will say there are different cuts of this because he said, here's my movie. It's my first mainstream film and it's a masterpiece and I'm a genius and I'm Francis Ford Coppola and I'm going to be huge. And Roger Corman being Roger Corman looked at the movie and went, okay, this is shit. I'm going to change this. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to re-edit this. I'm going to completely remove this part. We're going to lose these five minutes and I'm going to film a new opening. So I have seen this movie before. I've seen Dementia 13 before, but it was back when I was uh, a drinker. Yeah. And so I watched a film with a prologue where a psychiatrist is talking directly to the camera in a William Castle style. Really? 10 minute warning? Yeah, I saw it in the 90s. And I'm like, so I'm watching this movie and it starts off with her in a boat. And I'm like, this is not the Dementia 13 I remember. So I look it up and finally I saw that like, oh, yeah, there's there's like a few cuts. 10 minute warning. There's a few cuts out there, and I, when I first saw this, I saw the cut with a different opening. And it was made specifically in a William Castle style by Roger Corman because he saw Francis Ford Coppola's movie yeah. as a bunch of shit. This is literally the second time I saw this. Now, it's the second time I've seen it, too. Now, the first time I saw it, I remember a particular actor being in it that was... Now, it just could be a faulty memory that was not in it at this time. And I can't think of what his name is, but he was the guy who was in Simon King of the Witches, if you ever saw that. Okay. Yeah. And since, since he was Roger Simon, Corbin I forget just... what, his name is, yeah. what his name is. He was very yeah. popular at the time, and this looked like it could have been his first movie. So where the fuck where the fuck did he go? Let me tell you, this week's double feature of The Intruder and Dementia 13 was a difficult Roger Corman double feature for one very important reason. No dick. Yeah. yeah. Dick Miller is in True. no way in any of these. You could shoo him in as a janitor. Yeah. Damn. Really? Yeah, there's no dick yeah, in The Intruder. There's no dick in Dementia 13, and the only dick in The Intruder is William Shatner. It's a dickless double double feature. Dickless Roger Corman double yeah. feature. I'm not even going to have you explain the plot of Dementia 13 because oh, oh, it's please, fucking no. insane. No, 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 it's not. Here's the plot okay, of the Okay, then movie. go ahead, go ahead. If you can do it in like two minutes. Oh, less. There is an axe murderer. He kills a bunch of people. He gets caught. Then the rest is mindless filler that doesn't fucking go anywhere. Okay, okay. So there's a woman, and there's the woman's fat husband, and they're rowing in a boat, and the guy has a heart attack, but right before he dies, he's like, hey, I hate you, you're a bitch, and with me dead, you'll never get any money from my rich mother. So she's like, okay, then, when you're dead, I'm going to throw you overboard, pretend that you're off on business, uh -huh. and have everyone come to this castle that we are at so that I can win the family over and get all the money. And then she's killed by an axe okay, murder and the right. film is just psycho in a castle. Well, well, right off the bat, she, she gives the story about him going away and nobody, nobody questions it. Nobody brings it up again. So that plot line is stopped there. She then gets yep. up to other hijinks. Yep. And then she's killed by an axe murderer. So her, her whole plot line is now useless. Yeah. And didn't go anywhere. Yeah. And that is the same with, with everything else. And then the difficult part about Dementia 13 is, okay, this movie is shit. But is the movie shit because Francis Ford Coppola's first mainstream feature film was shit? Or is it shit because Francis Ford Coppola made a genius film and Roger Corman says, this sucks and I'm redoing all of it? Yeah. Or is it a uh, mishmash of both? Who knows? I, I, would, I would really... I, 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 whether it's right or wrong, 
For this one, I enjoy putting the entirety of the blame on Francis Ward Coppola. I'm fine with that too, and I'll Fuck tell you, you exactly Mr. why. Fuck you, Mr. Godfather. If I had to watch Dementia 13 four times or The Godfather Part 3 once, I would watch Dementia 13 four times. Okay. Just period, because fuck that last Godfather movie. That movie fucking sucked. Yeah. But yeah, this is a low-budget Irish ripoff of Psycho in a castle. Uh-huh. It's got a... It's boring. It makes no sense. The sound is shit. Bad script. Horrible dialogue. Shitty film. I will say, though, you know the woman, the star who's then killed halfway into the film? Yeah. That was Vincent Price's sister from the last week's movie, The Pit and the Pendulum. Oh. Because Roger nice. Corman is going to Roger Corman, so of course he's using just the same fucking people over and over again. So that's the same chick. Yeah. Oh, and the the doctor person who ends up, you know, shooting the killer and saving the day yeah he was in a bunch of other movies including and now the killing starts chariots of fire and a clockwork orange oh clockwork. yeah so clockwork orange he was he was the rich liberal yeah who took alex in yeah dude had a career yeah. Good for you getting out of the Corman shadow. So uh so that that's that's all I've got this week. I, for this I week. also enjoyed the colorization. Yeah. Because the colorization made the movie better by making it much worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so many different versions of this movie out there but yeah the coloring was horrible but that's this week next week we are continuing our summer yes of bad roger corman films by looking at another double feature and i'm super excited about this i'm super excited about this it, let me tell you the other double features are all going to be gold next week we're watching the trip, okay, drop movie, and Piranha. Okay, Piranha. Very excited about that. So that's next week. We're also going to be playing a game, two games actually. I've actually written both of those out. I'm super excited. It's going to be so much fun. Such a fun episode. But that's next Piranha. week. Piranha yeah. was Jonathan Demi, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. Yes. And it was a Roger Corman film. Like, kind of a famous one of his. But uh, that's next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, though, uh, Willie Shat, Julian Carlton. Yes. Frank Lloyd Wright's Haunted House. Project 2025. Look up on Look up that shit. Uh, Donkey Kong owes its creation to Popeye. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty darn good, a a pretty a pretty a uh, uh, a good episode of the Pope on film. This has been a damn good episode. Yes, yes. Okay, I felt the same way, but I feel like like you're the one who gives that distinction to the podcast and not me and I don't want to step on any toes here but 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 yes I concur with your assessment good sir so until next week I am Bunny Williams and I am Reverend May Lynn, and on behalf of Natasha and Eleanor and Q and everybody else in the family, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens! And you juice waffles and poopy tuts. Thank you, Q. Eleanor? <laughs> and you poo-poo. 
And you poo-poos? And you poo-poos. Well, Max isn't here. And you waffles? You know, he'd say something weird like that. He always makes it up on the spot. And you fidget spinners? And you uh, digital circuses? Something like that. Doo 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 doo, -doo. and you Freddy Fazbear's doo 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 skitty papa doo wow cut and print. That's a wrap on episode four eighty one. Woo!